So Alan Crabb got traded today, and you guys might remember Alan Crabb, you know, he was on our Portland Trailblazers and Brooklyn gave him an $18 million a year offer sheet when Alan Crabb was a restricted free agent. Of course, Portland matched that and then a year later said, hell no, we're not taking that on any longer. Sent it to Brooklyn, who sent back Andrew Nicholson, who we waved and stretched and his dead money is still on the salary cap books. But anyway, Brooklyn thought, oh, Alan Crabb might be worth $18 million a year. Well, today, they finally admitted that, no, Alan Crabb is not worth $18 million a year. And they traded him to the Atlanta Hawks. They got back Torian Prince in the deal, who is a guy that I really wanted. I wanted to try and offer Harkless and maybe a pick for Torian Prince to save some salary, but now that dream is out the window. But this also affects the Blazers in more ways than just Torian Prince getting traded because it sets the precedent for what it's going to take to dump salary this offseason. And it's a pretty high cost. In order to dump Alan Crabb for Torian Prince, the Brooklyn Nets gave up the 17th overall pick and their 2020 first round pick. That's two first round picks, likely in the middle of the draft, in order to dump Alan Crabb. Now, they did it to open up a second max slot so they can go after Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. Now, if they go get Kyrie Irving, then that means they let go of D'Angelo Russell, and that would be a very interesting development. So they do have some solid reasoning, as it is rumored that Kyrie Irving is interested in going to the Nets, and if Kyrie Irving goes there, they could easily land a second star. So I'm not saying that it was necessarily a bad move, for the Brooklyn Nets. The bad move was taking on Alan Crabb in the first place. If you want to look at it like this, Torian Prince is worth half the value of a first round pick. So basically dumping Alan Crabb's contract took a first round pick and a half. The narrative I've heard all summer is that Portland has to dump Evan Turner. But with this trade today, I don't think it's going to happen. I fully expect Evan Turner to be in a Blazer uniform next season unless he's attached with other expiring contracts this offseason in order to trade for an upgrade in the starting lineup. That's the only way I can see Evan Turner getting traded, and honestly, dumping his contract off the books in general isn't really the best move, not only because of the assets that it would take in order to clear his contract, but then you're looking at an inability to match salary at the trade deadline next season for a guy like Blake Griffin. Harkless and Myers Leonard make a combined $22 million a year. You're talking about Blake Griffin making $33, $34 million, or any other player in that range? You have to attach more salary. At the trade deadline, Evan Turner's contract isn't even a problem for teams because, for example, if Detroit is looking to hit the rebuild button, pretty much every team out there is going to have to match Blake Griffin's salary, and if it's an expiring contract, then that's free money that summer. We saw it last year with Tobias Harris getting traded for expirings, with Chris Tapps Porzingis getting traded for expiring, Expiring contracts don't necessarily have value in themselves, which is a mistake I see a lot of people say. They say, oh, expiring contracts, they're valuable, they have positive value. I don't think they have positive value, they just better help facilitate a move. Because if you're making a trade for Blake Griffin, you're trading future first round picks and or young prospects like Zach Collins and Anthony Simons. That's the value in that deal, and the expiring contracts just help facilitate that in a way that Detroit likes. With Evan Turner's contract on the books next season, it would be much easier for the Portland trailblazers to facilitate a trade like that and when you look at what brooklyn just gave up to get rid of alan crab portland is not in a position to do that it would not create cap space for them all it would do would be to open up the full mid-level exception but portland can likely do that by dumping one of myers leonard or maurice harkless both of those are guys that i could see teams taking on for free or you could have something like detroit giving up a end of the bench guy like langston galloway for myers leonard and then we could maybe flip langston galloway to a team like the thunder for patrick patterson who owns only make six million dollars a year then we can wave and stretch him which would only be two million dollars on the books which would save us in total nine almost ten million dollars if we traded Myers Leonard down to Patrick Patterson and waived him there's creative ways to create enough money in order to open up the full level exception this summer and it starts by potentially trading Maurice Harkless or Myers Leonard so it comes to a point where no 
the Blazers don't have to trade Evan Turner, and honestly, they shouldn't even look to entertain the idea of dumping his contract this summer because of what it just cost Brooklyn just to get rid of Alan Crabb. And honestly, Portland should not be giving up that price in order to open up the full mid-level exception, which is only three and a half million dollars more than the taxpayer mid-level exception. If Portland needs to open up that full mid-level, you start with Myers Leonard and Maurice Harkless, not Evan Turner. And this is all coming from a guy who hated that Evan Turner was playing playoff minutes last season. So anyway, let me know if you disagree for any reason. So anyway, that's a wrap for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it gave you some added perspective on Portland's offseason. And with that, I'm out of here. This has been Tori. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Go Blazers.